Welcome to this economic lecture. In this lecture, we will take globalization as a topic. Why globalization is so important and what is the drawback of the globalization? Further, we have some benefits from the globalization too because whatever the technology we have currently, whatever, like you are watching this video, this is only because of the globalization. So what is globalization? How is it benefiting us? And what are the drawbacks of it? We will see in this lecture. Moving ahead. So what do you understand by globalization? Globalization as the word means global. It means what? World. It is talking about world. Whole world is connected through it. It means that a term is belonging to the each and every people of the world and all are interconnected that is the meaning of in the layman term that is the meaning of globalization global means something belongs to the whole world it is interdependence of the world's economic culture and populations and it has been brought about by the cross-border trades and goods and services, technology, flows of investment, people and information. Currently, the globalization is spreading through FDI investment, foreign direct investment or getting technology. Even right now you are watching this video on YouTube. YouTube is of another country, I am belonging to another country. So in that manner also you are gaining the knowledge. You are using the utilization resource of some another company that is situated in another place. So that is that is interconnection between the people. That is interdependence of the world globally. That is something known as globalization. If you see, there is a new term that is coming recently. That is McDonaldization or Coca Cola Coca Colaization. So these terms means that, like see, McDonald's, if you go to some other country, the burgers, the pizzas that they will make, that will prepare the masalas that will be used is will be as per their choice. Like if you go for the Fra France and all or other regions, you will not find that spicy like Indian pizzas and burgers. That is what these company are getting interconnected throughout the world as per the taste of the people of that nation and that makes that changes that modifications of the product as per the people's requirement of the country of the different country makes more interconnection between the people more cohesive between the people and thus this globalization is acting as a macadronalization Similarly, you will find the co-colonization, that is Coca-Cola, strings and all these belongs to the another country. But now, each and every country of the world are in drinking the product of Coca-Cola. They have a different product, mango juice, earlier it was a black drink. But now, many products are coming from that company. That is something called globalization. We all are being interconnected. So, it is the accelerated flow of goods people's capital information and energy across borders often enabled by the technological developments over the past three decades globalizing trends were assumed to be a new normal it has been become a new normal earlier people hesitate to take something from the outside world from foreign country there was something like no we can't take it is a foreign product we want domestic product we want desi product so now in the last few decades it has been seen that now the products from the foreign companies or the technologies that making us our life ease are becoming more normal that is coming to a new normal earlier the desi's product that the country's product domestic products were new normal for them were the normal for them but now this globalization trends have been become a new normal fashions products different jeans earlier torn jeans were not uh, was a fashion now the torn jeans are fashion that have been taken from the western countries so that is what that globalization trends so what are the trends the fashion design the products the technologies and all have been becoming a new normal 
okay so the, there are two sides of the globalization on the positive side the cross border flow of people goods money and information creates a new wealth and opportunity not only for domestic for the international students too like in the india also you will see foreign students coming into india and studying here similarly indian students are going to the another nations like giving the gra exams and all and they are studying in the another nations so in that manner this is a positive side but in the negative side the cross border terrorism the smuggling drugs trafficking all are a negative side of the globalization okay so now in this content in the starting of the lecture as a heading i have put a purchasing power parity what is purchasing power parity let us suppose in india you are buying 1 kg of milk at rupees 44 okay it means if you convert that rupees into dollar it will be less than 1 so it doesn't mean in america you will buy food or that milk less than 1 dollar no it is not like that that is something called purchasing power parity that a basket of goods cost rupees 100 in india then what is the cost in usa so this purchasing power parity it will not be equal to the exchange rate that currently we have the prices of these burgers are fixed as per the purchasing power parity like suppose what does i'm trying to say that in india you will see that apple in the southern state will be expensive even in the some northern states are expensive but if you go in the jammu and kashmir and the regions you will find the apples are less expensive or if like otherwise you will find cashew cashew in other countries in some countries in arab countries and all you will find it is less expensive or saffron is less expensive but in india it is too much costly it means what it depends upon the regional issue regional balance prices and all so you can't say like in bihar or in other state you are buying apple rupees 100 rupees per kg so it doesn't mean you will buy the same apple in jammu and kashmir in the same rupees 100 per kg like if jammu and kashmir let us suppose that state is using a different currency so it do, doesn't mean you will convert that rupees 100 into that currency and you will buy that apple in the same price no it is not like that it may happen usa have a large production of apple and india have a less production of apple or usa is producing that product a at large number of times and ultimately the cost of their product will be less so that's why that is something called as a purchasing power parity okay so the prices of the burgers are or the products are fixed as per the purchasing power parity of the location okay so initially globalization started due to colonization only in india or even the other states or other regions that were the colonies of british like the america and all so it started from colonization how it started from colonization what happened when brit like the first time british acquired the regions it only because of what only because of the business and it means what they were going from one regions to the another regions they were fetching resource from india selling into france and europe regions similarly they were taking products from the america and the selling the products in the other regions it means what it's an interconnection of the two nations or the multiple nation that is something on globalization that is something not that globalization was given birth from the colonization and thus this globalization has emerged so british came into india as a source of raw materials factories leading globalizations like colonization technology advancement social media payment system including cryptocurrency emergence of mnc's better transportation so global supply chains and all these are the current situations that are giving an example of globalization okay so in Brit british came into india at the time when the laborers present in their india were cheap laborers and they were skilled one ultimate then after when the machine started to come they started to 
hiring less laborers and producing more the products for the machines so uh, in that manner it started to shift and these are the phase wise i will just discuss in the coming slide so the factors leading globalization what are the factors that leads to globalization first one the colonization that colonization then technological advancement like currently you're using youtube and all then social media your facebook twitter facebook twitter whatsapp and all payment system including cryptocurrencies emergence of the multinational companies better transportation flights and all global supply chains global supply chain the resilience initiative i have explained i have given a lecture on this also it is available in the current affair topic you can go there global supply chain resilience initiative okay it was between the japan india and australia these three companies are together in this supply chain please go through that lecture it is also a important thing with respect of your current affairs and the coming exams for th this year also for next year also so what are the phases of globalization so david ricardo that has given a law of comparative advantage what is the law of comparative advantage the law of comparative advantage describe how under free trade an agent will produce more of and consume less of a good for which they have a comparative advantage this is used in the global supply chain for profit in products it is like that let us suppose china is selling a cloth okay for that cloth china will take cotton china needs cotton so it can buy cotton from india also and it can buy cotton from egypt also but the cotton quality and the price of the cotton is less in egypt so what will do china will do china will buy cotton from the egypt okay now for the production of clothes china needs button so china will buy button usually from bangladesh now what happen it will get less cost so now china has got clothes china has got buttons now china will come prepare one cloth china will prepare one cloth okay now what will do china china now it will sell the product either in india or mostly in japan japan okay so it means what it is that it is getting the product from where it is least cheap where the uh, that is where the product is cheap where it is getting the price of the product lesser and ultimately the final product price will be manufacturing cost will be less and china will sell that product at higher price or even at the less price to compete with the other companies and it will earn profit that is something all that that will come under the law of comparative advantage this is how this global globalization has been connected that's why all the maximum of the that electronic products are being manufactured in china and this is why japan has restricted right now due to covid situation because 45% of the marketing or the product imports of the japan was from china only and at last when this covid situation hit japan realized this china dominance over its market and ultimately japan came up with the supply chain resilience initiative that i've just spoke in the previous session that i have made video on this lecture too and thus in this japan has said to the india australia and japan has been collided together and another southeast nations are also or planning to connect with this scri chain and in this japan is saying that that make industry in your country or and you will make industries of your product in our country and so that we will have a multiple dependency of the manufacturing of the product it will not be like that we will be completely dependent upon the china because the china's dominance have been up in the japan market similarly most of the countries are dominated by the chinese product so that's why to kill that monopoly to destroy that monopoly japan has taken that initiative and many of the countries are coming with are supporting this initiative because china does not have a good relation mo in most of the neighbors okay so the phases of 
globalization what are the phases of globalization first in 1.0 we will have a primitive one where power of steam at the india was like just started and at that time it was like the production was dependent upon the number of laborers or the number of skill laborers it was not like machines were not there it was completely dependent upon the skill of the labor and that was the first phase of the globalization so due to skill labor in global trading in the clothes james mod then after steam engine that james bond made the steam engine steam engine helped in in the creation of machines and more inventions happened which made bulk production of goods ships rebuilt started to fast and the company started to become independent and countries did not rule for trade like they started to make their own now the they have the ships now they don't have to settle their companies especially to the other nation they can go to the ships they can buy the resources they can come back to their home nation so then usa then started rules of trade and thus 2.0 version came as the post world war era us dollar became the global trade currency because the us was powerful and from at that time on from that time only us became the powerful because they denoted dollar as a common currency as the only com- currency for the trade and thus from that time from the post world war era us became the powerful nation as their dollar became the global trade us dollar so imf world bank un showed us as a powerful because they all deals in the currency that is us dollar so now goods can be assembled at any place and this came as the version 3 so manufacturing the product anywhere sell it in another place manufacture the product in china sell the product in india america and other nation so as per the low wage countries global manufacturing of goods take place and observe global supply chain like how they should be interconnected as just a, i've just have given an example that how china will produce a cloth where he will buy the cotton from the egypt take the button from the bangladesh and sell the cloth in the japan so that is something on global supply chain and in the wonder in the version for internet came now we can give a knowledge based products like it revolutions we are able to give services to the companies by sitting in infosys tcs are servicing the products are supporting the company that are in the europe that are in america and all by sitting in the india so that is something called internet came as a new revolution as the version 4 in the globalization so bpo business processing outcomes and the call centers are there that that is assisting the client settled in the another nation that is something called globalization that is the benefit of globalization and this shows how globalization made interconnected okay so what are the benefits and disadvantages of globalization so first we will see benefits of globalization is so lack of comparative advantage that you can take the product from another country where you are getting the cheap products like the same thing i have example cotton taken from egypt button from bangladesh and selling the product in the japan by the channel so the part of the product will be manufactured where economical cheaper to produce okay that is something a law of comparative advantage who gave that law of comparative advantage david ricardo other benefit more employment creation in the nations providing cheap labor like usa the software engineering cost the software engineers cost in the usa usa salary is very high so what happens they hire the engineers from the india and in the most of the cases all the indian engineers are in the india only they are not called in the usa or the other place they are supporting their company from india through the big multinational companies like tcs infosys cognizant and all okay now egalitarianism like everyone should be equal market forces and ease of business will decide the location not the economic clout as per the market force if the market is in india the company will try to come into india see like similarly just now pubg today's pubg has announced that it will be coming into india in the form of indian way in the starting of the pubg launch the first time when you come into the pubg game there were no clothes only the pants were there similarly now the pubg has said that the the game that will be launched in india with the 
collaboration of the Microsoft and using the Azure server and all. In this time, the the that icon that people will be have a close the that animated people in the game will be have first time in the clothes. So that is something called how we are connected. How egalitarian like everybody is equal. Where the market force will be there, they will go because they want to do the business. More markets, more source of raw materials. Globally, all countries are dependent for manufacturing on China, and Japan utilized this as Corona pandemic. I just now have explained supply chain resilience initiative. That thing is mentioned here. Go through that lecture, you will understand it. So Japan utilized this Corona pandemic and said Japan will be giving economic incentive if company manufacturing industry moves away from China. Then it will be good, and this may they have started an initiative, supply chain resilience initiative. Right now, India, Australia, and Japan are grouped together. So sharing of knowledge and technology transfer should be there, so that globalization will be enhanced. Cohesion force will be more. So that happens with the Scorpion submarine. Where example of who provided the Scorpion submarine? France that gave the technology for the submarine, and later it said that. Take the technology now. Manufacture in India. Similarly, we have Rafale and all. So, what are the disadvantage? New colonialism. That supplier of raw metal and receiving finished goods. If you are like many countries are unable to stand against the top countries, like rich countries are becoming rich and poor countries are becoming poorer because they are not manufacturing the but they are just receiving the finished good products. That is something new colonialism is harming some of the poor countries. So that's what. in the prime minister in this corona pandemic has said that we should be become a self reliance atmanirbhar bharat now we have debt diplomacy like china has a debt diplomacy kind of things like it will provide you money lots of money like earlier like deal has been said that this port will be made in the 100 million dollars and after that in building the china built the port in 200 billion dollars now it will say that give me my money otherwise i will take the ownership of that port for 100 years so that is something called debt diplomacy by the china and the best example of the debt diplomacy of the china is the hamban tota port in the sri lanka where it put the sri lanka in the debt trap and ultimately it took the control of the hamban tota port and that is a security challenge for the india now world trade organization is asking to decrease the tariff then how the small countries will survive because if small countries will decrease the tariff on the imports then their manufactured domestic products will not be able to compete with that foreign products to compete with the domestic product with the foreign products the countries used to impose tariffs so that their price should not be competitive with their domestic products and ultimately their countries should also be revived it should not be always like that that country should receive a finished products if a country is receiving only finished products and not manufacturing any products it means what that country is not earning anything that country is only expenditure is increasing that country is only that is uh, investing that is expenditure is increasing of that parts uh, of that country but revenue is decreasing because that country is not manufacturing anything it is only receiving the finished good products that's what i want to explain it here that uh, that's a world trade center is asking to decrease the tariff but if the small countries will decrease then it will be very difficult to survive for them then imf conditions for deficit relief like sometimes international monetary fund help in the deficit of the relief fund like when india was in deficit in 1991 then imf helped india pumped the money in the indian economics fine indian economy and with some certain conditions like you have to impose these 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 conditions you have to allow private companies into the india then lpg reforms came and all so if a country does not have enough money to pay for imports imf will help in like India was get help in 1991. Then unfair competition, monopoly. Like right now, Google has a monopoly. Nobody is able to compete with the Google. Coupling of economy, so much connected with that. If the one country fails, another country will also fall. 
that we have seen when the USA economy fall down in the 2007-2008 whole world was impacted even India was impacted why because of globalization all the countries are interconnected that is one of the drawbacks like if one country fails most of the countries will fail why I will just give an example let us suppose one country manufactures mobile country A manufactures mobile now this company A imports chips that boards and all short circuits and all from another country B and country B's economy has been failed and country A is selling that mobile to C now what will happen company B is not exporting the product to company A then what will happen company A will not be able to manufacture the mobile and ultimately company C will not be able to get mobile phones so what happens all are getting affected if one country is getting affected that is the disadvantage of the globalization that we all are interconnected if one country hits all country will hit what is the current state of globalization growing protectionism that all country in this covid situation want to protect their nations protect their economics how by reducing the imports nobody want to get import the product importing means what that expenditure is getting increased no income is coming so and tariffs will be more if import will be more that's why government that uh, most of the countries want to impose tariffs so that that product that their domestic product will compete with that foreign products so that is the current state of situation that all the countries want to protect themselves by reducing the import that's why our premium has also said at nirbhar bhavar we have to be become self reliance and similarly most of the defense product are also been started to manufacture within the india they have stopped getting import from the other nations now they have started most of the product in the india only ultimately this will help in reducing the import and further if the production will be high we will be able to export also okay now we are shifting to digitization like trying to establish rule of digital trade like japan wanted to set rules for digital trade india denied it and rise of third world war countries earlier western ussr had influence but now country like india are hurt and covid situation had disrupted like earlier india was also not getting important but now due to the digitization all are we are connected our pml also going to the various nations so all these politicization digitizations are helping india now the countries like india are also being heard on the national plat on the international platform okay so that is something in globalization lecture of the economy please like and subscribe your subscription is a form of payment for me it is a new channel i need your support and i'm making i will make video like this every time and i will keep you updated please give your suggestions if you have any feedback positive negative feel free to ping on my twitter handle i will be happy to assist you thank you